my mom was a first grade teacher. Okay. My sister was a fifth grade teacher. You're and surrounded. My, and my wife is, was a third grade teacher. Uh-huh. So, you know, I was, okay. I was treated pretty much like a third and fourth grader <laughs> when they got together. You know? That's funny. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, I do have great appreciation for educators. Uh-huh. And South Bend educators especially. Yeah. Yeah. You heard that there. That's longtime South Bend Tribune columnist Bill Moore talking about how surrounded he has been by educators. More of that later, but first. Welcome to Round the Bend Now and Then, a podcast that shines a light on the South Bend and Mishawaka areas past and present. Through interviews with local business owners, leaders, and community members, our listeners and I learn together about all of the great people and great things going on in our community as we also learn about South Bend and Mishawaka's history and how intertwined our past is with our present. Over the years, the South Bend Tribune has been a part of my life in one way or another since I can remember. My parents have always had a subscription and were avid readers, and so have I. As a kid, every afternoon you'd hear the thump of the paper hitting the porches in the neighborhood, and all of the moms and dads would get home from work and reading the paper was one of their nightly rituals. Then of course, like many others, I got my own South Bend Tribune paper route. Monday through Friday, almost every day of the year, slinging the old Tribune. So every day, I'm folding these papers, tossing these papers and blazing heat, rain, hail, snow, getting chased by dogs, avoiding the neighborhood bullies, all while making sure I fulfill the subscriber's differentiated requests. Putting Mrs. Fetter's paper in her old milk box, making sure that Mr. Getz's paper is inside his storm door, or acting gracious and thankful when old Mrs. Liebig only tipped me 50 cents. But at the time, I really didn't realize how critical of a role that little old paper boys like me had in making sure that the community citizens were informed and up to date with all of the news and happenings in the South Bend and Mishawaka area. What is also wild to think about, that back in 1990, 91, 92, that I was delivering the words of the exact same veteran South Bend Tribune columnist that 30 plus years later, I'd be interviewing on something called a podcast. So in this episode, I meet with retired longtime South Bend Tribune columnist Bill Moore. Bill started at the Tribune in 1973 and spent almost a quarter century as a sports writer and editor. Bill also branched out from sports and had several roles, including writing a human interest column. We get into everything from his years at the Tribune, our common love of the Chicago Cubs, and even his experiences flying on top of airplanes and riding on the back of garbage trucks. We also talk about Bill's new book called Kissing the Frog. And as you'll hear in the episode, it's a fiction book told through the lens of a 15-year-old boy named Spanky. It's all set in South Bend, Indiana, and references to local streets, places, schools, names, etc. are littered throughout. It's a really cool book and a neat story, and it brought me back a bit when I was that age. So sit back and enjoy my talk with longtime South Bend Tribune columnist Bill Moore. Well, hey, first, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your family, all that good stuff, where you went to school? Yeah, I uh, I was born in Newcastle, Indiana, actually. Okay. Uh, my parents lived in Knightstown, where uh-huh. the uh, famous gym is that for the movie Hoosiers. Hoosiers. My dad played in that gym as a high school player. Wow. But we moved around a little. My dad finished up at Purdue, so we were in West Lafayette for a while, Crawfordsville, Indiana, Galesburg, Illinois. And then in fifth grade, uh, we moved back to Indiana, to mm-hmm. Kokomo, Indiana. And I went to high school there, kind of uh, consider it my hometown and yeah. went to IU, had a little army time. And then uh, uh, South Bend Tribune in 1973 and just wow. stayed on. Wow. So your dad went to Purdue, you said? Yes. And you went to... I I you go Hoosiers <laughs> go Hoosiers I uh, actually went to Purdue Nursery School okay so I st- 
tell my Purdue buddies that I got the best education I could get at Purdue and then moved on to IU <laughs> later on. That's great. Oh, that's great. I tease anybody I see with Purdue stuff, you know. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we'll get into the book first, Kissing the Frog. I must admit, Oh, I tried to get done with it. I'm on page 173. I'm <laughs> almost there. Not good. But I, it is cool. It is neat. I truly, it's been, even working in schools, I, I haven't sat down and read a, a fiction story of that age. I haven't read it in a long time. And it, it kind of brought me back a little bit. Well, it's a coming of age story. It's probably geared for young adults, uh-huh. but... I always say that it's uh, also for the young of heart. Yeah. And, and those yes. who want to be a little no- nostalgic about their own yeah. upbringing. Yeah. Of course. And it's neat, especially for us living in the area, because the whole book is littered with. It, the, it is set in South Bend, Indiana. Right. Spanky, the main character, goes to Clay High School. Uh, you have throughout, you know, the, they wrestle the different high schools, Mishawaka, Penn, the, the, his frogs are named noter and dame and so hey, yeah, it's just you neat have read it <laughs> <laughs> it's just really neat um just want to provide the listeners just with a little overview of the book yeah it's about a a blended family mm-hmm. two kids a, a girl and a boy who are the same age step step uh siblings mm-hmm. and they're wrestlers and uh the girl's better than the boy but the boy's better at some other things. And it's just uh, their interaction with each other and uh, how they uh, kind of navigate teenage mm-hmm. years as sophomores that play high school. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it goes over about a three, four week period. Yeah. So it's not a long look at their lives, but uh, gives you an idea what, what, you know, growing up maybe... Yeah. Like if you have forgotten about it. Def- and, and my next question was, how was it a little bit more challenging writing through the eyes of a teenager? Or did yeah. you just channel your inner self? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, some of Spanky is me. Uh-huh. The main character, there's a little bit of my growing up in that yeah. character. And then my kids, uh, oh, uh, yeah. I have three kids. Mm-hmm. They're all in their 40s now. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, I can remember that. Yeah. I actually have a grandchild at, we have eight. Uh-huh. Our oldest is a uh, sophomore at Purdue. So, nice. So I've seen that oh, fairly recently. Yes. yes. Up. Did you come across any challenges writing the book or, I mean, that's your career, but. Yeah, this is a little different. Of course uh, it's fiction. Yeah, it's fiction. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I've always kind of wanted to do a, a work of fiction, uh. I I know some people when they write a book, especially fiction, they get these little three by five okay. cards and they write what they each of their uh, characters they want them to do and mm-hmm. all that. None of that. I just no, I just went with it. Uh-huh. I didn't know how it was going to end. Right, right. You no, know, I didn't know uh, what character might come into the book halfway uh-huh. through. It just. It was just a story that just kind of evolved. Yeah. Yeah. I um, speaking of evolved, I was reading it and then uh, Lori Middlebrook. Is that Middle Middlebrook? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and Spanky and I'm wanting I'm I'm thinking oh my god Spanky's gonna date the the popular girl and stuff and then when Lori had little inklings of Sally like little jealousy I was like no Sally stay away but then <laughs> later on it kind of worked out a little bit. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I was kind of getting into it like I would like when I was a, when I was younger. So Sure. Um the uh, great movie references in there, Karate Kid, Back to the Future, and uh the the whole funeral home scene. We won't give away too too much, but man, they uh that was intense, huh? <laughs> yeah, I you know, I uh after I retired full-time from the Tribune, I worked part-time for Palmer Funeral Homes. So I had a little ah, bit of that. background in in funeral homes. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering, yeah. Yeah. I wrote stories for them, but I also worked visitations and, uh-huh. and the funerals. And, yeah. Uh, so, yep. uh, yeah, <laughs> some of that I probably wouldn't have known about without working. Right, there. right, right. 
Again, folks, I highly recommend you go out and get Bill's new book, Kissing the Frog. Christmas season is coming up, and it would be a great gift for teenagers and adults. I'll include the website in our show notes so you can click on it and buy the book. I also encourage you to check out what we talk about next. You also have a, a, a website, right? Yeah. More and more. Talk to me about it. Yeah. Uh, I uh, retired it all the way mm -hmm. from the Tribune two years ago, two mm -hmm. and a half years ago. I'd, I'd uh, been an employee there for 36 years wow. full time and then continued to write another 12 years of Sunday column. Mm -hmm. That ended about two and a half years ago, and I still wanted to write of some. Course. And some of my buddies did too. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we just, uh, you know, write what's on our mind, uh -huh. uh, post the stories on this moreandmore.net. And uh, I have a big list, a, a big email list where I send out a reminder about once a week to okay. about 300 people. Uh -huh. And uh, hopefully more people than that read it from time right. to time. But right. yeah, it's just been a labor of love. Exactly. It's, it's scratches that itch, the writing itch. Right. And, it's, you know, yeah. it's free. We yep. don't get any money for it. It's just uh, right. something we enjoy doing. I read, um, let's see, Scott Dunham uh, just recently on uh, July 30th posted something. Uh, the article's titled, Lots of Additions to Battelle Park but historic rock garden, hard to top. And, you know, he wrote about the new and shiny stuff at Battelle Park right. with the, the new playground equipment and the the um, water features there. But then he just kept coming back to the, the WPA era rock garden there and sure. just how nostalgic he felt about that. And matter of fact, I'm doing one of my upcoming episodes is on Steel Stadium at Mishawaka, which is a WPA project. Right. I interviewed Pete DeKeever down here who wrote a, chapter in one of his books on it and so instantly i made that connection between mishawaka wpa but anyway here he is 50 years later being reminded of something that just still sticks out in his head you know as nostalgia is there yeah. anything in your anything in, in in any places or anything like that that you still feel nostalgic about all these years later ah boy uh i was uh more of a runner than i was a wrestler yeah and uh i when i go home we used to live real close to the uh, Kokomo Country Club, and mm -hmm. I used to run over there mm -hmm. all the time in the morning and all. And I just love walking over there before the golfers get out mm -hmm. and remembering when I used to that's cool. run it. Yeah. You know, that, that's neat. That's one place. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Anyone who is even remotely associated with me knows how much sports mean in my life. Sports and events surrounding sports bring us together and provide lasting memories. In my life, there are hundreds of different memories that I cherish, but one of them has to be up at the top. I have a, a, a framed letter in my office that my 15-year-old son wrote the day after the Cubs won the World Series. Ah. And it's, it's the letter and it's there. And I'll just read a few excerpts from it. Um, and he was only eight years old then. So, sure. I mean, so here he is in class the very next day, the free write, and this is what the kid chooses to write about. Um, Yesterday night, I watched the Cubs play. That was the most exciting night slash morning ever in my life. And then he goes on with some details about the game. Addison Russell hits this and that. And, and he ends it with, there was a rain delay and I had to go to bed. But then the thunder and lightning and my dad screaming woke me up. I thought to <laughs> myself, should I go out there and see if everything is okay? Then he wrote, you know, the Cubs won the World Series. But I just, I think back at how special, it was only you know, seven years ago, how special that was with me and my, my kids and my wife and just thinking of even my grandfather and thinking of, of that. And I've always said that sports are way more than just a ball and a bat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Talk to me just about the power of sports and just how they are just more than a ball and a bat. Yeah, I... uh in fact, uh, I was at game six over in oh, Cleveland. I wish I kind of stayed on, but I yeah. paid way too much <laughs> for those tickets. So uh, one of my sons went with me. How cool. And, you know, I measure time by what the Cubs had done at a certain point. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. 
uh, you know, like uh, 1984, uh, you know, I think back to the Cubs and getting into the playoffs uh-huh. for the first time since 1945. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, a timeline. Yeah, right. Where, where, where the Cubs, uh, when I can think of a date, it's, well, what were the Cubs doing at that point? In time? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's yeah. special. It's, yeah, it's more in a sport. It's just a lot of nostalgia. A lot of relationships yes. with buddies, yep. family. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, even, even my buddies who are White Sox fans. Uh-huh. You know, you you still hold a absolutely a certain uh, you know feeling yes for different things just because we're baseball fans and mm-hmm. watch the same things and it's yeah. just neat. I I love it's just way more than a ball and a bat. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. just sports in general. It took my wife a few years to to learn that but you know <laughs> well my wife grew up in scotland wow so she knows still doesn't know a lot about american sports mm. and that's fine yeah. you know uh <laughs> that's my thing she has her thing mm-hmm. so right she knows how important the cubs are to me though Thank goodness. <laughs> and she'll go to a game. Uh-huh. She might take a book with her, but, <laughs> but she'll go, go to a game. game. We just went Saturday. Matter of fact, my brother's getting married, and um, him and his fiance are big, huge Cubs fans, and they're late 30s, so they're not doing the bachelor party, bachelor oh, yeah. They did a combined one on the rooftop. Oh, the bus good. trip. It was cool. It was and, really, and they won, really, too. And they against won the in the rain against yeah. the Braves, and yeah. but my dad was with us, and it was just, it was neat. It was just a cool experience, you know, just different than just going with three or four of your buddies. It was like a whole bus full of our family and friends. And it it was cool. It was really neat. In the beginning, I talked about being a paperboy. Next, you hear me point to one of the main tools of the paperboy trade, a South End Tribune paperboy canvas bag. Now, this bag proudly hangs in the basement studio. That same bag carried thousands of newspapers back in the early 90s. Next, we talk about the impact of the paperboy, but we also talk about newspapers in general and some of the more specific aspects of Bill's career. Now, there's a scene in the book where Spanky's describing a dream that he had, right? So he got out of bed and he's up real early and he hears the newspaper hitting the door. Oh, yeah. And so I instantly, that got me thinking, about Paperboys for the South Bend Tribune. So what were your thoughts about the demise of actual Paperboys in our city when they switched to delivering the paper bright and early? I know, I know. Huh? Well, they went from uh, a p.m. afternoon paper Mm -hmm. to an a.m. paper in 1997. Mm -hmm. And I had just gotten out of sports then. I had gone over to the feature okay. side, and and uh, so it was a little different for me uh-huh. anyway. But I, our, my kids were paper boys. I just see, yeah, right there. I mean, I, I have that oh, hanging uh, up. I keep it there. <laughs> you know, I, I think a lot of a lot of kids learn their first, you know, t- taste of business. Through being a paper boy. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down we did. And, and you know, it's amazing how I go out in the community here and there and uh, people say, yeah, I delivered the South Bed Tribune. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. So many people. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of sad that that <laughs> I mean, I'm just went kinda, away. It is. I mean, I, progress, I guess. But but man, us paper boys worked hard. For, oh, yeah. for 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 you know your journalists writing the writing the the everything we got out there we're well, if your kids delivered the Tribune you know then but walking up and down these streets here in Sunny Mead carrying wads of cash carrying oh yeah knocking on doors have watching grown adults hide from a fourteen year old <laughs> knocking on a door because they don't want to pay the eight dollars. Uh, bright and early Saturday mornings, heavy Sunday papers, but you're 100% right. It, it taught responsibility, work ethic, and all those things. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss that. I miss that, yeah. And my dad, think he, um, I mean, 
he helped me so much just on like on the weekends and Sunday and Saturday because those Sunday papers were a nightmare. Oh yeah, he helped me tons. So I'm I I'm forever indebted to old Joel Emery for that. Uh, newspapers.com is how I get a lot of research for topics. Um, you you can literally I can go down a rabbit hole on these old Tribune articles really quick. You know, you can turn sideways, and it seems. And when I'm reading it, I'm thinking this almost there. It wasn't all good back in the day. And there was it was bad stuff going on also. And it's almost like I'm scrolling social media, reading different articles of this crime happened here, car accident here, right. this here. So I'm like, eh, this is kind of like social media. It's just they waited until all the once to drop it on you. You know, right. Right. but I've. I'll go down rabbit holes. <laughs> well, you know, today's South Bend Tribune, they have such few people yeah. working for them now that they go out and cover the basic news, which is a lot of it's crime. Yeah. And they don't have a lot of time to do the human interest yes. stories. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's tough. But then what are historians going to do a uh, hundred years from now? I know we have the internet, but those newspapers hold a lot of the new newspaper tell a story of the time where you can get a sense of what people were feeling for um, sure you know but it, yeah it's it's sad the way the newspapers are going and i don't know how much longer than south and tribune's gonna yeah still be putting it on your porch i know uh, i still pay for the physical paper i just it's just i like it <laughs> yeah yeah i know what you mean all right speaking of the south and tribune now September 30th, 1976. That's about a year and a half before I was born. Um, you were out there riding on top of an airplane. <laughs> what in the world? Talk to me about that. You, you know, I was still <laughs> single at the time, and I was doing a lot of these George Plimpton stories. You remember George Plimpton at I, all? I've heard of him. He would do these participatory stories Okay, okay. where he would put himself... Like he would, uh, uh, at an exhibition game, they let him play quarterback for a while for you. the Detroit Lions. Okay. So I kind of did that. I yeah. went out to some of the high schools and wrestled some kids or, <laughs> or, uh, I, uh, at a Notre Dame hockey, uh, practice, I, I would get in the go and, uh -huh. you know, write stories. I actually boxed Rudy during the, uh, the bingo bouts practice, a uh, practice, uh -huh. but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I did a lot of stuff, but that's probably the uh, the coup de grace <laughs> was when I uh, uh, got on top of a biplane there and got strapped in and was up, up on top of the wing and got that, about a thousand feet up in the air. And, oh my goodness, that's yeah. crazy! And you know the thing is, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> that's what the article said. <laughs> And you were out in the elements flying, you know, that the wind is hitting you so hard, you know. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Here's the, here's the, um, the article. You know, I do have that picture in my den. Oh, do you a nice, but nobody looks at it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I, I saw that and I read that. I was like, holy moly, he's flying on top of an airplane. <laughs> um, and and you you mentioned where you kind of go out and put yourself in, in the situations. And right. it's kind of like a dirty jobs type deal like Mike oh, yeah. Rao on, right. on TV. And you definitely had some experiences because that same year, this must have been that time, you wrote an article about you um, helping with private trash, helping with the trash Oh, the yeah. trash guy, yeah. you know, and yeah. I had to laugh. <laughs> you, you, you know, the dog's chasing you because your pants smelled like gravy trade and all that. But did you go out and find, you were the one who went out and found these experiences or right. did your editor? You did. I did. I okay. Did. Nobody else was doing those kind of <laughs> stories, you know? Yeah. And I was a sports writer at the time, uh -huh. so I was doing these kind of things on my day off. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I okay. mean, some of the uh, it's sports related stories, yeah, maybe uh, maybe that was part of my work day, but yeah. uh, a lot of those things. And, and uh, the uh, the trash job that I rolled on the back of a trash uh -huh. truck, 
Uh, I got in trouble for that, not from the South Bend Tribune, but I was in the uh, Army Reserves at the time, <gasps> and I wore my Army jacket. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> so they, they the, the picture was in the paper yeah. of me with it on. Uh-huh. You know, so <laughs> that's wild. And that was a private trash. It was back when the when more private trashes right. were out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's that's amazing. Also, over the years, I mean, you kind of you put yourself out there too, right? I mean, you shared things about your family and all that, and you know, I think that endears you to the listeners, yeah, or to I, the to the readers. I, yeah, I was hoping that people would be able to relate to those kind of stories. Uh-huh. You know, I always had to walk a fine line there. That my family is no better than your family. Yeah. We're we're the same. Yeah, you know, and 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 showed the, you know, the things that you know, not so proud of sometimes and what we goofed up doing sometimes, Uh you you know, the last thing readers want to read is some brag. Yeah. That's true. Yep. You're authentic. I mean, you know, we, you know, readers want authenticity and and that's exactly, exactly right. Sometimes my wife and kids (laughs) did not like being in the paper. I'm sure. Talk to me about that. Did they, were the, did they get upset at times or more just kind of like, dad? <laughs> kind of dad. Yeah. Now they don't mind if I mention them occasionally. Uh, like I said, they're your age, though, yeah. in their uh-huh. 40s. Uh, my wife one time had a book that she bought me. And it was going to be for my birthday. Mm-hmm. But she put a Danielle Steele jacket on it and read it at night. So oh. she read my book before she gave it to me. Uh-huh. And you know, didn't want me to know that. Right. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And she says, don't you r- 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 write about that? Or, and I could resist. You could not resist that. I said, I I didn't share it with anybody, but you, meaning all the readers yeah. out there at the end of the story. Uh-huh. And uh, from, from then on, I always had to ask yeah. if, if I was going to write about a story yeah. that involved. Yep. Still do. Happy wife, happy life. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, I could imagine. I'm sure at times your kids are like, no, no, don't write that, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and some of my friends, even with the website now, some of my friends are the same way. Uh You're not going to write that, are you? You know? But it... I always was amazed at writers that would tell a real funny story about something that happened. And I say... Are you going to write about that? And they'd say, no. I said, well, you just entertained 10 yeah. of us here. Don't you think uh, other readers would like that? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I always thought that was funny that they would tell a a great story, but then they wouldn't want to share it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the things that you miss about the grind of being the full-time working for the Tribune? If you miss anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I miss the readers, yeah. although I'm, I have a fair amount of my core readers right. for the website. Uh-huh. Uh, miss the interaction with a lot yeah. of them. Uh, this is going to sound strange. I miss uh-huh. the deadline. Yeah. I mm-hmm. I love the deadline. It just Structure. Got, your, got your adrenaline yeah. going. And so, unfortunately... I almost need a deadline now on everything I do. Yeah. Clean the bathroom, Bill. We're having company over. Give me a oh, deadline, honey. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so I can see that though. I truly can. Yeah. Your whole your, your your whole working career and life. You're in the army too, but you 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 have deadlines and structure and boundaries and limitations. And I can see how without those, you kind of would yearn for that. Yeah. So I I miss that. And, and some of my good friends from the Tribune, Absolutely. I still, but I still have a lot of them. You uh-huh. know, we still play yeah. golf together, get yeah. together for a beer, yeah. so, so that. But uh, there's a lot of people I miss. Yeah. Uh, but, Often, I'm sure it's the people in yeah. any any yeah. job you have. For, you sure. Know, for sure. You don't miss some of the more mundane things. But like you said, you worked for the Tribune for a long time. Um do you remember over the years, what were some of the more controversial topics that you kind of maybe remember 
hovering around the newsroom for a while, but just if there's any more controversial topics over the last 30 years that you remember. There's obviously been many of them. Uh, you know, just going back to sports, you know, yep. women coming into sports. Yes. And Title Nine. And uh, wanting and, and deserving the s- same amount of space and coverage that Absolutely. The, uh, the boys did. But it took a while because we only had a s- certain size staff and we were uh, already overworked. And then they yeah. throw all that rest at us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that caused some, I'm sure some problems. So, yeah. But, you know, I'm so glad that girls are getting oh, hands the down. same opportunity. My, my daughter was the best athlete of our three kids. Yeah. Uh, I got a granddaughter now on the Penn cross country team. Uh-huh. That's going to challenge for the state. Uh, yeah. so, uh, but at the time it, change it, it was it was tough yeah it was tough and it d- wasn't that we did want to cover them it was correct trying to work them in the yeah. the power the resources the manpower to, to do it right right um uh, with local sports outside of notre dame what do you remember being some bigger sports stories over the years just locally here well obviously when clay won the uh, <laughs> that was my next question talk to me about it what do you remember about that? well uh all three Your sons were kids, there at the time. All three of my kids were in oh, school, cool. freshman, junior, and senior how neat. at Clay. So they got to enjoy that. Uh, it went back to when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Kokomo won the state basketball championship okay. when I was in sixth grade. Uh-huh. How, how important and such great feelings that had. You know? Yeah. And to see my kids go through the same thing was cool. God. And I covered it, you know. And yeah. I was like, I was at court side and, uh, how neat I, I like Tom debates, the coach, uh-huh. and they're just, uh, uh, that the shot that put it into overtime by Jerron Cornell. Cornell yeah. yeah. It was cool. It Man. Was cool. And to this day, the nostalgia is still there. I mean, it's 30, it'll be 30 years next year. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was a sophomore at Adams and I just, wasn't at any of the games or anything, but I remember watching it on television and just ah, cheering to how edge of your seat it was. And right. How cool. That is, right. I'd like to do an episode on the 94 Clay team, that matter of fact. I think with Clay closing and with it being sure. 30 years, I think people would be interested in it. Oh, you know? I do. I do too. Um, I do too. A lot of people have no clue. It was right. the last South Bend basketball championship, you know? <sighs> and then, you know, in the 88, Notre Dame yeah. uh, national championship season yes. was pretty sweet to cover. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that was awesome to cover. Right. Man. That but is y- neat. You know what's uh, kind of weird, I guess, is I don't get real emotional mm-hmm. at, uh, at sports because I was that a sports was your job so too. long. Exactly. You know, you had to sit up there with a blank yes. face and cover. I always let my re- uh, emotion show for the Cubs. Uh-huh. That was my team that I said. Yes. That's my childhood team. Yep. I'm still going to be a fan. Mm-hmm. But everything else, I had to be pretty yeah, objective. Yeah, pretty objective. Yeah. 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 Is that hard? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, I think at some point you're rooting for a good story yeah. more than you are uh, for a certain team. That's a know? good point. Yeah. That's a good point. I could see that. Yeah. The worst thing in the world is when you're at a night game and uh, it looks like it, well, before the overtimes even start, it looks like you might have a tie because oh. you, you've written in a lead that if uh, Notre Dame wins this, you kind of got it. Okay. If LSU hangs mm-hmm. on and wins it, you kind of got the lead written. I see. But if it if they tie... Uh-huh. You're you're up the creek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. That's over. true. You 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 experience sports in a completely different manner because you have to report it and you have to make it engaging to the to the readers too. You know. Yeah, I mean the first edition. Sometimes you had to have a story done in 15 minutes, so you had to be writing as the game was yeah. going on. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, change it. Change the topic here. So talk to me about how your therapy skills increased over the years being married to an educator. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom was a first grade teacher. 
Okay. My sister was a fifth grade teacher. You're and surrounded. My, and my wife is, was a third grade teacher. Uh-huh. So, you know, I was, okay. I was treated pretty much like a third and fourth grader <laughs> when they got together. <laughs> you know? That's funny. Yeah. But uh, uh, I do have great appreciation for educators. Uh-huh. And South Bend educators especially. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a job that's Tough. not getting any easier, that's for sure. No, no. it's not. <laughs> but I'm sure you were there to help to be, to, to help her uh, over the years and the ups and downs. Oh, I graded a kids. few papers, <laughs> and went in and read with some of the kids. And, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. If you can meet anyone from Michiana area's past and hang out with them for a while, Man, who who do you think that would be, and why? Dead or alive? Or? Eh, dead. Uh, Stan Kowaleski was a Hall of Fame baseball mm-hmm. player. He did not grow up in South right. Bend, but uh, he retired here and mm-hmm. lived here for many many years. Mm-hmm. I did do a story once on him before he died, mm-hmm. but I would like to go back and. Ask him a lot more. He yeah. threw the spitball, uh, <laughs> struck out Babe Ruth uh, uh-huh. more than his share. And uh, it would be neat to hear. Just, just to talk a little more about him. Ernestine Racklin, who just yeah. died. Mm-hmm. You know, she was a True. powerful woman when uh, women really mm-hmm. weren't in the business world. And she lost her husband and took over the business. Yeah, that's uh, an amazing story. Yeah, she... Uh, I really never had an opportunity to sit down with her. Uh-huh. She would have been an interesting person. She would be too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Speaking of the Cove, uh, I recently did an episode on the Cove with with Mayor Parent, and it's just amazing. Well, he wrote about it in his book also, and it's just amazing. The the pub when I went back and researched it in the Tribune, and I was alive at the time, but I was a kid. I was sure. eight or nine. The public upheaval and the public debate was it was heavy. It was for that. It Talk was, to me it, about your memories around that time. Yeah, I uh I couldn't understand why we didn't want a baseball team here. Right. Uh but some people, you know, all the taxes yeah. and everything that went. And you know, I'm sure he mentioned it. And I, I have not read his book yet, uh-huh. but I will. Uh, Mayor Parent really wasn't a baseball fan. Not one bit. <laughs> Not one bit. Uh, Joe Kernan, who came in after him, he's <laughs> yeah. the one that got the advantage of it. Uh-huh. He was a big baseball right, fan, right? Right. And right. played the game, you know. But I always thought that was funny. But uh, yeah, it was. It was really strange that uh, we didn't get behind that uh, as much as uh, we should have. I just ran into John Baxter at the uh, grocery store today. He was the first uh, president. Okay. Of, okay. Of the, uh, the South Bend ch- White Sox at that yeah, time. It was then the South okay. Bend White. He was just a cheerful guy back uh-huh. then, and still is. And I think he helped make it really go. Yeah. So. And um, and now we got the Cubs. You're darn right. When that was announced, oh my gosh. You know, I even rooted for them when they were the White Sox, even though I, as a Cub fan, I, I can't root for the Chicago White Sox. You can Sox, root for the South know. Bend White Sox. <laughs> it, uh, no, that's what Mayor Parents said about him not being a baseball fan. He thought that that was an advantage because basically he knew that the community didn't think that he was a, just a fanboy, just a fan, you know, just a fan of it. He was more just for the economic development here and everything. Right. And so right. He, uh, he didn't know much about baseball no, no. <laughs> nor did he know much about a whitewater uh, kayak <laughs> course for either sure. and for sure and and that i did an episode on that too and that's the same thing there was public sentiment against that it's like i don't know these, these things we want to build that can help our, our our city um i don't know but then you got the college football hall yeah I was, <laughs> I, I was just gonna mention that <laughs> and, and and uh bless his soul uh, Mayor Kern and had no doubt that was going to work. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't. I think it partly because it was just a one-time thing. 
people don't go there every month, yeah. you know. It's, yes. You go in and say, this is pretty cool. And it was pretty cool. It was. But you just don't want to go back and, you know, you saw it, you know. It's kind of like the Baseball Hall of Fame uh, out in Cooperstown. Uh -huh. I would go to it every couple of years, <laughs> but most people say, uh, yeah, seen that, done that, uh -huh. moved on. For moved sure. On. During my time with Bill, I could tell that he is a naturally curious person. You don't work for almost 50 years as a journalist and not be curious. I thought that it was neat that once I had wrapped up my questions with Bill, his natural journalistic curiosity came out and he started asking me questions about myself, about the podcast and all of that. I think it's cool and it's my podcast, so I'm going to wrap up this episode of me interviewing Bill Moore with Bill Moore's impromptu interview of me. I hope it was all right. Hey, I enjoyed it, man. Oh, it good. was uh, good. You're good. You got the good. great voice for it. You keep it moving. Good. Good. And you could, you could do this full time. Hey, I'd love to. I would love to. Um, I, I would love it to be my pre retirement job. That's what I'm going to call it. Just like you would scale down to just the count, just something like that, you know? Right. Um, so does. You, what does your family think about it? They love it. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, they, I, I really, I had another podcast. It's still out there, but it's called Memory Mission. My first name is Matt Emery, right. so Memory Mission. And that was, yeah, my dad made that for me. Yeah. Um, that was just, I did that to really practice and try to get good at this. And I did that with just my family and friends. Oh, okay. So, you know, when you get together with, with, with your family and friends, you rehash old stories. Like you tell the same damn stories like 15 times. I was like, why can't we record these? I can craft them into a story, you know, like with sound music and the sound effects in the background and share them. It'd be hilarious. And right. so the, the stories that are shareable, a lot of them are. <laughs> and so I've had my, I mean, both my parents down here, my sister, my brother, my wife, my sons, like, good buddies over the years I've had down here and I have about 24 episodes of that too it's out there if you ever want to hear it it's on okay. Apple it's on all those things memory mission um, but and my family loved it and so that's how they they were like man this guy's for real with it you know once they heard it and, and heard the quality of it so um, but so, yeah so ahead. did you have any background in this before I mean None. were you a public speaker or did just you just being a principal yeah it has literally the skills from that and teaching right. are here because you got you to gotta be able to interact with people, right? You sure. have to be a good speaker, a writer. Like I write the narrations to the episodes and God, there are thousands of words, you know, like I have to also writing um, and then thank God for the internet with just learning how to do it. So you went to Adams. Yes, sir. Did you grow up in this neighborhood? I grew up on Longfellow, right across Twickenham, 1330. <laughs> so I... <laughs> Lived there until I was 16. My folks moved to Granger, where they still live, right off of Brick Road, Brick and 23, mm -hmm. right there. Uh, they moved when I was 16, so I stayed um, at Adams for the last two years. Mm -hmm. We just used some of my cousin's address. Uh, and then I just went to Holy Cross for two years and went down to IU. I graduated from there, too. Moved back and moved into here. So I've lived here for 21 years. So your class of... 96. Okay, my kids were 94, 95, and 97. Oh. My uh, one son, my younger son, uh -huh. went to Holy Cross for a year before he went to IU. Yeah, yeah. I, ne I needed Holy Cross. Uh, he did, too. <laughs> he did, too. So was uh, was Mo Aronson still teaching then? Oh, Mo was. Um, now, I had heard stories growing up about Mo because my whole family went to Adams, both, yeah. both my parents, my dad, my, I mean, everybody did. And so my dad would tell me, you never wanted to have a, this guy we had named Mo Aronson. Here. <laughs> and, but by the time we had gotten there, he was just, he, he was subbing. He wasn't a teacher. Oh yeah. There. Okay. But we knew old Mo was tough. This dude, because he lived on Wayne street right That's over here. Right. So we would see him I mean, late eight. I mean, he was, he was up there just on his bike coming, you know, riding around. If you go to the YMCA, you oh, see I, him in there doing like one arm push ups, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw him at his best. Maybe at his worst. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Who was your favorite teacher at Adams? Mike Zeus. I like Mike Zeus. Mike Zeus. I, I played I, at Purdue. Yes, he did. Yeah. He is 
I'm getting goosebumps even talking about him, but he probably was the most real teacher as far as um, just being honest with us. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't being fake or anything. And so he would just be real with us in class. And from there, and he never scolded in public. I mean, it was always if he had to get on you, he would do it in private. Right. Let me talk to you out in the hallway, Louie. You know, brr. take you out in the hallway and talk to you. But then um, when I went back as an assistant principal, he was still there. Oh. And that man was, I mean, he's just a leader of other teachers, a leader of students, like even the principal at the, there at the time, like you look up to Mike Zeus, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and when he retired, I, I just wrote him a quick, you know, you know, you meant a lot, you know, type deal. And, and he, his response was cool too. He's a good guy. Thank you for listening to another episode of Round the Bend Now and Then. A special thanks to Bill Moore for coming on the show and sharing your memories of writing for the South Bend Tribune over the years. Let's hope that exactly one year from now, in early October of 2024, that our Chicago Cubs will be back in the playoffs. Folks, check out Bill's website, moreandmore.net, to find some neat human interest articles crafted by him or his friends. And while you're on the website, be sure to purchase his book, Kissing the Frog. As you heard in this episode, it's a real neat story set in South Bend with tons of South Bend references. Lastly, do me a favor. Leave a review on whatever podcast app that you listen to us on. Also, follow us on all the socials. Twitter, Round the Bend Pod. Facebook, Round the Bend Now and Then. And you can reach out to me via email, roundthebend574 at gmail.com. As always, please share the podcast with those you feel who would like it. Join us again next time as we learn more about South Bend and Mishawaka's now and then.